I cleaned these skins yesterday. Um, they're, they're from about 1960, they're possibly 19, as early as 1950, but anywhere between that time. Um, they're, uh, they're lizard skin. It's, um, it's iguana and um, it's actually rather nice and it's, um, it's cleaned up very, very well. The skin is a bit, it's a bit dry and uh, cleaning it with the alcohol solvent has, um, has made it a little bit drier, but that's not a problem. We can easily, um, easily bring the, 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 the condition of the skin back. And these slight wrinkles across the vamp here, they, they should sort of, um, they should come out as the skin takes on moisture. Um, there is slight damage to the skin due to the dryness and they've obviously been worn in the past. I don't think they've been worn since the 1970s, but they've been worn when the skin's been dry and where it flexes, um, it started to crack very slightly and uh, I didn't investigate it before. So let me just, um, actually, I am, I'm, hey, look at all this dust, look, I'm com everything's covered in dust. I'm covered in dust, my equipment's covered in dust. I'm working in my, um, my uh, hair salon, which is under, it's under lockdown from the uh, coronavirus at the moment, so I'm doing a huge amount of renovation works in the shop, and um, consequently I'm covered in dust. So is all my equipment, but never mind. Um, I, I wanted to have a really good look. Um, there is cracking to the skin here. If I bring it closer to the lens, we might be able to see it. Black's not ideal for viewing on camera. It uh, tends to absorb all the light and uh, it looks rather dull, but there is a crack here. I don't know if it goes all the way through. I've got a tiny little screwdriver. I'm just gonna um, push it behind the scales that are lifting. And actually, it only goes in a couple of millimeters. It hasn't broken all the way through, which is good and it's bad. Um, I can do a, a temporary repair. I can put a tiny bit of glue behind the scale and, and push that down, and that should last reasonably well but I suspect it might crack further and then I would have to put a, a, a chamois patch behind and that would be a more permanent repair. So have a look at the other side. Um, we've got here, yeah there's two areas of damage, one right here and a bit more serious appearing just there. Let's bring it closer into focus. Now then Yep, yeah, this one's the same as the first. It doesn't go all the way through, so that will just, that will glue back down. This one I think is more serious. Let's see, actually I'll take the tree out. I need to be able to see if it's separated entirely. Yes, it has. And I can push the screwdriver between the outer skin and the lining. Um, it's a small hole, but never mind. It's, it's, more, it's more serious than the other two. Now, what you can't do, you can't just push a little bit of glue through the hole and stick the outer skin to the lining. The lining and the outer skin, they move slightly independently as the shoe bends and flexes. They need to be able to move independently of each other. So if you put a blob of glue, glue them together through a, through a hole, They'll be, they won't be able to slide independently and that will cause a much more severe crack. The only real way around this I've found is to, through the hole, you have to, you have to use a bit of, um, bit of chamois leather, the type of leather that would, you would wash a car. Um, just a very small bit, you have to carefully thread it through the hole between sandwich the chamois between the outer skin, the decorative skin, and the inner lining. And it's, it's quite a fiddle, you have to poke away. You have to get all the chamois to lie flat. Once it's lying flat, you can then poke a little bit of glue through the holes and stick the decorative skin, the outer skins, to the chamois. And so the chamois and the outer skin stick together and the other side of the chamois, it remains independent. It's, it lies against the internal lining skin, but it's not glued to it, so it can slide. The glue's on the top of the chamois and then the, the decorative skin's on top of there. Um, and that works quite well. What I've done, this um, it's, uh, chamois's normally very pale. I actually dyed it yesterday. It's a bit stiff, so I need to um, if I just work it around, try and soften it up. The, the, the solvents in the, uh, in the dye have made this rather stiff. I'm going to try and trim a little bit of this, uh, the black. Um, because there's a definite crack and I've got to put a, a backing skin to it, obviously if I put the, the, the very pale cream skin, um, it's going to show through anywhere where it's not 100% fit. But the black will be much better disguised. So um, that's all I've done. I've just used a little bit of leather dye and I'm trying to soften it up. Let's see if I can get this through the hole. 
Got some tweezers. I need a, I need a pair of scissors. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. What do we need? It's not very big. Probably be about the size of a about the size of a thumbnail. It needs to be larger than the um, larger than the hole itself. Let's just trim a bit. It's going to be a bit of a fiddle because the hole really isn't very big that I'm going to try and get this patch through. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it through such a small hole, but we'll have a go. It would be far, far easier if this hole were bigger and this tear were more severe. Um, I've done that many times, so let's have a look. I've got the patch here and I'm going to try and make it so it'll fit on the inside around about there and then we'll have a decent little background to, 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 to glue and f try and fix the outer skins too. Let's see, is that too big? Um, I'm just going to trim it a little bit smaller. It's a little bit big and I'm going to put some pointy edges on it, trim, trim some off. Uh, it is a it's a rather tiny hole really for squeezing such a large patch through. I don't know if I'm going to be doing it. Let's, let's see. So I'll use a pair of tweezers and uh, let's see what we can do here. If I sit where the camera can see me, we just put the back of the tweezers. No, they, no I won't. I'll use the back of my little screwdriver. Am I going to be able to get that in there? That's in, oh gosh, this is going to be an awful fiddle. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. I think the hole's going to be too small to get this through, if I'm honest with you. Right, let's have a look. I don't think I can do it. Mm, no, I can't. Um, how am I going to get this in there? Just, let's see. Certainly not with the tweezers. So let's try with the little screwdriver. Is it going in? Yes, it is. It's going to be an awful fiddle. I don't know if I'll be able to do this on camera. That uh, it's going to take an awful long time. I'm desperate not to make the hole any bigger, but I really, oh, here we go, it's going in. That's going in, yes. That's in quite well actually, one side. But I now need to get this. I've got a flap here. That's the other side's come in to about here. Now, am I going to be able to do the other one? Let's see. Tedious process, sorry to bore you, but it'll work quite well if I can get this in carefully. Now then lift that one up. I need another screwdriver. Um, I've got various little engineer screwdrivers here. Come on. That's it. Yes, it's going. Yes. Go on. Yes, I've done it. I've done it. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to go in quite that quickly, but it's, it's in, but it will need a, a good amount of fiddling around to get it to lie flat. Um, and then uh, sort of rearrange the scales the best I can. Ooh. Push that there. There we go. That's just gone up there. So it's now comes all the way around and it's just, well, you probably can't really see, but let's bring it a bit closer. Still not finished. Okay. So you get the idea. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to pause the camera there.